Okay. Hi, everybody. My name is Karen. I'm a compulsive eater, and I weigh and measure three meals a day off the gray sheet. I commit them to my sponsor. I don't eat between meals no matter what. And one day at a time, I keep my abstinence in my program first. My abstinence date is 9-5-21. Uh, so I, I'm kind of hoping to to, I was thinking, of course, I was thinking about it because that's what we do, right? We, oh my God. And the first thing I wanted to say is, is this has been a very long process for me, this food addiction. I've been addicted to many other things and people and um, you'll see, oh, oh, I know, I forgot. I wanted to show you some pictures because I think pictures are worth a thousand words. So can you see the screen okay? I think you can. So this is me. Um, this was uh, May 6th. It was one of my marriages. The one thing you got to know about me is I'm a serial marrier. So, you know, this was one of them. Okay. And these are my three sons who are now grown. He's 50. So this was in 2003. I know. This was somewhere in that arena. This is my sweet wife, Lisa, and me. I was uh, not as big as I've been in that picture. So I was in gray sheet from 2003 until about 2011, and I left. And when I left, I was a normal weight when I left. And when I came back, I gained 140 pounds. And this was right after a surgery that I'll tell you about. Um, I was just very big. This is where we're living now, actually, this community. Uh, this is me at a normal weight and looking just adorable. And this is me and my youngest son. He's 30 now, big gal. And this was at Pride. This is one of my favorite pictures of me because I think I look so adorable. <laughs> so, so I have always been fat. And fat is not a bad word for, to me because it just is. And um, I was born into a pretty negligent, abusive family and food became very, very important to me very, very young. When I was putting my dad's beer bottles away, I would eat out of the refrigerator as I was putting them in the refrigerator. My day ones I want to talk about for a minute. So I started in 816. Um, and I had a day one in, uh, that was in 2003. And to the best of my knowledge, I've had five or six day ones with nine, five, 21 being the last one. I will say that since 2016, um, when I came back after the relapse, I have never again eaten grains or sugar because I have such an allergy to them that when I started eating them, I was gone for several years. I'm like an alcoholic when it comes to grains and sugars. And so I just wanna, you know, I mean, I, I wanna just kind of talk about the allergy because it took me years and years, I'm 70, almost 73 here, and it took me years to figure out that I had an allergy to grains and sugars. And, and I didn't want that to be true because I loved them. And they did things for me that, you know, even now I watch other people eat those things. It doesn't do the same thing for them that it did for me. It was like the angels thing and everything was wonderful. And I was happy and content and I could talk to you. I might as well have been drunk. And um, and so what this is what happened for me is, is until I was in about the 1970, 1980, I quit using drugs in 83. And like I've said before, I was the only fat heroin addict I knew. I mean, most heroin addicts look really emancipated. I think there's another one on gray sheet, though. You know, they look really bad. Not me. And there's digestive issues when you're doing a lot of heroin or, or opiates. And I pushed right past those, <laughs> I'll tell you, and ate anyway. So, so these are just some of the methods I've tried. 
eating only one food or trying not to eat at all. So like, but my one food would always be like something with a lot of sugar in it, <laughs> like eating only one round thing with frosting on it. Okay. I mean, my, my thinking was a little altered. The diabetic exchange diet, uh, the cabbage, oh, the, you know, green soup diet. I mean, oh my God, that was so awful. Richard Simmons, if any of you remember Richard Simmons and his little card <laughs> and his exercising, which I don't like to sweat. So I would watch him while I was eating. Um, uh, eating only one food again, slim fast. Jenny Craig's, I did at least twice. People that loved me joined it for me and paid for it so that I would go. I thought that was so thoughtful of them. And then I would leave and eat. Um, Weight Watchers, whew, I would go and weigh in and then I would stop at the Mexican fast food restaurant on my way back to work and eat those big round things wrapped in something. You know, yeah. The HDG diet, the PRISM diet, Metrical. Age, those little things that you ate that were supposed to fill you up. Yeah, they didn't. Um, uh, Atkins, low fat. Um, OA was the next thing. Eating only healthy foods. First of all, if I liked healthy foods, I would have been eating them all along. But no, I didn't like them that much. You know, and the brown versus the white kind of a little grainy thing. Yeah. It might take me a little bit longer, but it wasn't long before I was eating again. Um, uh, all of those uh, got me. Oh, and I prayed. That's right. And I don't know what's wrong with God. He was not listening. Um, I looked for skinny people and tried to do what they did. First of all, they moved faster than I did, for one thing, which made it very difficult. And, and they ate different than I did. And, uh, and then I'll tell you in this time, see, I'm in 12 step. Okay. And by, uh, by about 2000, I finally got it that when I ate grains and sugar, I would not stop. I finally got that because every food plan I was on allowed you to eat those at some point. You know, you, the foods you get back. And the last diet that I was on before uh, I came to Gracie was uh, no grains or sugars and you weighed your food and somebody talked to you every day and I paid for that. I want you to know I have it for free now, um, but I paid for that back then. I weigh and measure my food and I talk to somebody every day. I mean, it doesn't cost a cent. And, and I stayed with it, but when you start to add the foods back and it was healthy food, okay, I eventually binged again. So that one picture of me in the white dress was about three months before gray sheet. And I had lost 40 pounds when I got, when that picture was taken, I gained it back very rapidly. So how I found Gray Sheet in 2003, this woman walked into my office. She's in a nursing home now. We still get, I still stay in touch with her. And she was thin and she had been a good sized gal. And I didn't like her when I worked with her, um, but she was skinny now. So she was my BFF. So, so I asked her, how did you do it? And she said a 12 step program. That morning I had been sitting in my car and it was August in Oregon, so it was warm. And I had on a black kind of tent. You know, what else could I wear back then, right? Tent dress. And I'm sitting in my car sweating because I, when, when I'm that obese, my legs got raw, you know, under my boobs. Excuse me, guys, would get raw. I'm sure you got raw in all the wrong places, too. You know, we just get raw from sweat and friction. So embarrassing. Fungus. Oh, man, it was just embarrassing when I think back on it. And I said to God, I am afraid to even have hope that it could be different because I have tried so many things. 
and I couldn't fail again. I just had failed so many times that I just couldn't do it. And, and she came in that day and, and I asked her and she said she was doing gray sheet. It was a 12 step program. And I, that's the only reason I was willing to try it was because it was a 12 step program and I have great faith in them. And that's when I started gray sheet. I stayed abstinent till I can't, I'm very bad on dates, but I believe it was around 2011, 12, somewhere in there. And I did, and, and this is how insidious this disease is. I started thinking, this is always, listen to those words. Um, thank you. I'm um, thinking, think about that. Stop thinking. It's not helpful. And I started thinking that a 12-step program could help me eat in moderation because there are those. And I went to it and I learned more about the steps than I had ever known in AA or anything else. They work a hard ass program. I flew to Texas and did service work with them. I mean, I worked hard at it and I gained 140 plus pounds. And that picture of me hugging Darcel, that was at the end of that. So during that time, I ended up having to have surgery and I, I was huge again. And I went in and had the surgery and my abdomen was so huge. I have a picture of it, but I don't show it on here. I should, I don't know why I'm so embarrassed, but um, my abdomen was so huge that he couldn't do it laparoscopically. He had to cut me open from top to bottom. I was anemic. I looked like an old lady and uh, they, I coded in the uh, OR and I coded in the recovery room. Um, and when I came out, they had told Lisa that my obesity was killing me. And this doctor had seen me a normal weight and now the obesity. And he said, if she doesn't lose the weight, Lisa, it's gonna kill her. You know, well, that never stopped us. But um, I remember laying in bed and they and he came in and he said, Karen, the repair that we did to your uh, what involves your diaphragm and this and that, you cannot eat anything that we don't give you because it could rupture that. Now, here I am. I'm in the hospital like 14 or 15 days walking with a walker and IVs, barely able to get around in horrendous pain. And I'm up with my walker looking for food. And I'm walking because I was a nurse. I know the good foods always where the nurses hang, you know, the bad foods where the patients hang. And so, and by that, I mean healthy, unhealthy. So I found the nurse's place and I'm standing there and I'm eating it with tears running down my face. I was 30 years clean and sober. I was the vice president of a company. I was married to the love of my life and I'm standing there eating and I could not stop myself. I have never felt so alone as I did that day, ever. And I hope to God I never do again. And I'd like to say, bam, got abstinent. But as you see, that was in 2012. And this is now, now. So what do I do now? Because um, I know I'm going to run out of time here. And I just had surgery the 6th of January. And he said, boy, this one was easy compared to last time. I said, right. He says, yeah, you just aren't as fat. And I said, I'm not, am I? I mean, we're, he says, you're a tough old broad. And I said, I am. You know, we, he's just a good old guy. I said, don't retire till I'm dead. So today I go to meetings. I do service. I, I weigh and measure my service because I'm still working full-time, I sponsor, um, I commit my food, I read the literature. Um, I hit a meeting probably, I would say it's at least seven days a week. I go to an early morning meeting and then sometimes I'll hit another meeting later in the day. I'm doing the steps right now. Um, I, I enjoy my food, I make yeah, good food. Amazing. Okay, thank you. I'm really, I learned about a new, recipe for sawdust from Annette when she was over last weekend. Now I, this and this is how I'm, I made 24 of them and they're in the freezer. Why are we like that? You know, I'm like a heat seeking missile with something new. 
And Lisa said to me, you're going to eat that for a while, aren't you? I said, yeah, I am. But it's really good. If you want the recipe, let me know. So anyway, if you're new, you know, we love this meeting. Uh, please keep coming back. There's lots of meetings. Get some phone numbers. Find some people that you can relate to. You know, one other thing is sometimes what I've done to separate from Grace Sheet is I get mad at you. Now, I know I'm the only one that does that, but but so just pay attention. If you start getting an attitude about somebody, you know, and how do you know that? Listen to your thoughts. You know, that are hitting you know, just listen. And and I can't afford to separate from my tribe. And I have and I've paid the price. So I'm very grateful to be abstinent and grateful to be here and um, and no matter what. See, look at that. Perfect. I just love it when a speaker does that, don't you? So, okay.